Hi everyone and welcome to the presentation about vision and off-board control interfaces. I would like to start uh, with giving you an overview of the topic that I'm going to cover. Uh, so I would like to present to you the current state of the obstacle avoidance interface in PX4. Uh, I would like to go through uh, the messages exchange between the companion computer and the flight controller. And I also would like to talk to to you about other companion interfaces not used to actually control the vehicle. I'll show you then a couple of videos that this interface has enabled, and then there is time for discussion and community feedback. So I would like to start trying to answer this question, why is an obstacle avoidance interface is needed? Uh, Historically, in PX4, when you needed to use uh, computationally uh, heavy uh, algorithms, you would run them on a companion computer and then control the vehicle from the companion with the flight controller in off-board mode. Uh, so you would send from your companion computer the Mavlink message set position target uh, local NED with either position or velocity set points, position and velocity set points, or nor a normalized thrust vector. However, running in off-board leads to the loss of every feature that uh, um, PX4 emission mode uh, together with QGC offers. So if we uh, go through a, a concrete example, let's say that you want to fly waypoints and also control your camera while doing so, to point it at some point of, in of interest. Uh, as many of you already are doing, you would just like, in, in PX4, you would just like set up your mission in QGC, add uh, camera commands, upload the mission, and the vehicle takes care of the rest. So the PX4 flight stack uh, takes care of everything. But now, if we want to run uh, obstacle avoidance from the companion as well, we would need to switch uh, PX4 into off-board mode. And then all the integration done through QGC is lost. So to recreate the previous setup, you would also need to write an application to control your camera and something to send like the set points, the waypoints that you want to fly uh, to your algorithm running on the companion computer. And this is exactly the point that this interface tries to solve. It tries to, it enables you to uh, execute set points coming from the companion computer directly into mission mode. Achieving a seamless integration into the, flight, into the PX4 flight experience of features running off-board. If we want to see it more from like, a develop, developer perspective, it also makes our life much easier. Because with the previous setup of off-board mode, when you had to go out and test your obstacle avoidance algorithm, you had also to carry out your laptop, a router, SSH into the companion computer to make sure that everything was running properly, that you could send, send commands to it, and so forth. But now, uh, with this new interface, you can just go out with your vehicle, your RC, and the tablet with the QGC, and you can do everything to QGC, from set up, in, set up uh, the waypoint that you want to fly to check that the processes running on the companion are running fine. So basically, this interface goes towards a more product-like integration of obstacle avoidance and any feature that runs off-board into PX4. And also, I would like to mention that this interface is not like strictly for obstacle avoidance. It's more generally to control the, um, uh, the vehicle from off-board in mission mode. So now that I give you um, a brief um, overview of why we decided to go ahead with this interface, I would like to give you an overview of the architecture and the data flow. So if we go back to the example that I made before, you would go out and you would set up your uh, waypoints in QGC. You would upload the mission um, and arm your vehicle. So Navigator will grab the mission items that you have set from Dataman and send them through the URB interface to the flight task. Flight task will reproject from the global reference frame into the local reference frame and also prepare the set points that are actually then tracked by the position controller. In flight task, it also happens that um, those waypoints that you have set up um, are packaged in such a form that are sent on the FCU side to the Mavlink module to be then sent out to the companion. 
On the companion side, we have uh, Mavros that translates from Mavlink messages uh, to ROS messages. And then on the ROS side, we have our algorithm doing obstacle avoidance. So in our case, it's like the local planner from the Peaks for Avoidance project. The local planner will compute a collision-free path uh, and send it back uh, through the trajectory message in ROS to Mavros to be translated into a Mavlink message. Uh, on, the, on the flight controller side, um, the Mavlink receiver module will translate again the message into a UORB message that then can be injected into the flight task. So basically, the powerful thing about the interface is that it's positioned in, inside flight task. So you can take full advantage of all the features implemented before and after. So since like, this is the core point, I would like to go a bit more into details about the integration of the interface with the flight task. Uh, in the slide, you see highlighted in green the obstacle avoidance library, which is running inside flight task. And its main job is to translate data types between UORB and the data types in flight task. So again, once a uh, navigator will send uh, through the URB interface to the flight task auto, um, the current, next, and previous waypoint. And the job of flight task auto is to uh, uh, reproject those points into the local, local frame. Um, and from flight task auto, we have that um, the current and next waypoints information in local frame are gathered into the obstacle avoidance library. Then uh, we have that flight task auto mapper that inherits from flight task auto types adapt the current waypoint, which means that, uh, for example, if you have a land waypoint, it makes sure that the X, Y is position controlled while the Z is velocity controlled. And also this information is gathered in the obstacle avoidance library to be sent out to the companion. So once the obstacle avoidance library has the information from both flight task auto and auto mapper, it will send out um, a UORB message, vehicle trajectory waypoint desired to the Mavlink module on the flight controller side to be sent out to the com companion computer. And on the same, like vice versa, when we receive on Mavlink um, a message coming from uh, the companion, the obstacle avoidance library will translate the, the set points and inject them into the flight task auto mapper. Um, and from then on, we can uh, um, uh, exploit all the flight tasks that inherit from uh, the auto mapper. So for example, the auto smooth velocity, which is a jerk optimal trajectory. And then those set points are tracked uh, by the position controller. In this slide, you also see that there is a feedback loop from the obstacle avoidance library to navigator. Uh, and this feedback loop is really important because navigator has also the job to making the mission progress. So um, navigator checks if the vehicle is within the acceptance radius of the current waypoint. And if it's so, it updates the mission such that the next waypoint becomes the current waypoint. However, it could happen that the waypoint can never be reached if it's within an obstacle. So from the uh, obstacle avoidance library, we continuously check if the uh, vehicle position projection on the line between the previous and the current waypoint, um, if the, this reprojection is over um, the current waypoint on the line. And if that happens, we send an enlarged acceptance radius to the navigator such that the vehicle position is inside this XY acceptance radius and the mission can progress. The same check is also uh, applied for the Z acceptance. So if the vehicle is within the XY acceptance radius but is off the Z acceptant, acceptance, uh, we enlarge that Z acceptance such that the mission can progress. So this is basically an overview of everything that is happening on the flight control side. Uh, I mentioned a couple of times that there is like a message that is exchanged between the flight controller and the companion. So this is how the message looks like in Mavlink. Uh, we have that um, you can fill out five points. Each point can either be described by a position or a velocity or an acceleration, uh, yaw or your speed, and there is a validity flag. 
the acceleration field is never used at the moment, is always set to none because the flight controller cannot directly track the uh, acceleration set points. So how does it look like? From the flight controller to the companion, we fill point zero with the target and position and velocity um, of the waypoint. So what like the flight task automapper gave us. And we also fill it the, either the yaw or yaw speed uh, set point. Point one, one contains the current replet in local coordinates and the yaw or yaw speed associated uh, with the emission item. Point two is the next triplet in local coordinate, again, with either the yaw or yaw speed associated with that mission item. And of course, if we fill out uh, um, either of those points, we set the validity flag to true. From the companion computer to the flight controller, we send only one out of the five points with either the position or the velocity set points, or yaw or yaw speed set points, and also the validity um, uh, Boolean is set to true. Of course, you could think that we are like uh, wasting a lot uh, uh, of data because we have uh, space for five points and we are only using one out of five, but this is at the moment is more a limitation of the flight controller that can only track uh, one point. Um, and so this interface was also thought like a, with a bit like uh, more future work in mind and so that we don't even have to continuously update it. Um, as I mentioned, so this is just an overview of the messages exchanged to actually control uh, the vehicle. But between the companion computer and the flight controller, also other messages are exchanged. For example, you can send out the heartbeat uh, to check the healthiness of the companion processes from the flight controller side. So in Commander, there are um, some uh, checks on the healthiness of the companion processes, and we take appropriate fail-safe if anything is not running appropriately. And if your obstacle avoidance is enabled from boot, we also have pre-flight checks uh, to catch any system failure as early as possible. Um, so basically, uh, the integration of the heartbeat messages coming from the companion goes, goes towards a more like product-like integration of off-board features into PX4. Then we have the obstacle distance message. Uh, this message, um, it uh, enables to send distance data from the companion computer to the flight controller. So you can, uh, mm, for example, in the local planner, we, we send out an array with um, a um, horizontal resolution of six degrees to represent the obstacles 360 degrees around the vehicle. And currently, this message is used uh, on the flight controller side to do collision prevention in position control mode. Uh, since like this, um, uh, this interface was enabled roughly a year ago. Um, we have started using it more and more, and we realized that some things were missing. So, for example, um, right now we are working on adding the type of each point that we are sending. So you could specify if it's a position, if it's a land, a takeoff, or a loiter point. We are also extending the obstacle distance uh, message to be the interface for collision prevention, no matter what the data comes from, so you can send the data from the computer, but um, the data from distance sensor directly attached to the uh, flight controller are also mapped to this message such that they can be used to do collision prevention. Overall, we are always working to try to make like the flight experience when there are features running off board and not always more seamless, and this is a continuous work in progress. So for example, on the local planner right now, you can set the mission speed from QGC, and that gets also executed on the companion side. And then uh, there is fast RTPS that uh, Nuno talked about yesterday, and so that, that will come such that we can directly exchange um, your message with the companion. Uh, so now I would like to show you a couple of videos. I guess you have saw, you've seen the demos yesterday, so maybe it's a bit less interesting, but this is uh, uh, the PX4 local planner, um, avoiding a pole and then a tree in mission mode. So like it's what basically this interface has enabled. Yeah. 
yeah, you here you see QGC and the map. And the waypoints will get to the companion that can avoid the tree while doing its survey. And then we have the safe landing planner uh, that uh, tries to fun, find uh, flat areas uh, to land on. So here you will see uh, the vehicle trying first to land on trees and then instead opting for like the super green Swiss grass. Uh, it's looking at the point cloud, the Z value of the point cloud, and looking at the mean and average um, in a grid. And so we evaluate that just to see if it's flat enough to land. Yeah? <coughs> Sorry? Uh, it's a structure core. Uh, so it adapts and, yeah. Um. So yeah, all the code is available in PX for avoidance. We are quite a recent project and we would love like for you to browse around, contribute, create issues, uh, and yeah, just engage with us. Um, any other question or, yeah? Sorry? Right now, yes. And right now, no. I mean, like the set points are sent only if they are valid, otherwise you would receive on the companion side and none. Uh, yeah, on the, from the companion side, we send sometimes false, um, uh, like a message with, a f with false on the valid flag because you have a delay uh, so, like, if, for example, you are flying in position and the interface is not running, uh, then you switch in an auto mode, there is a delay between, like, when the companion receives the message, you do the computation and send back the set points. So, for that time frame, we need to send that it's not valid what we are sending back. Is there a difference between not sending any Yeah, there is a difference. It's uh, the fail-safe behavior on the flight controller side. If you don't send anything, you go directly into a fail-safe. If instead you send that it's not valid what you're sending from the companion, we just wait a bit more uh, and keep executing the flight task until uh, we get either get something from the companion or we go into fail safe. Mm, yeah. Sorry, can you repeat? Uh, so on the PX4 avoidance project, there are two obstacle avoidance algorithms, the local planner and the global planner. Uh, one does more like computes an octomap, and the, the other one is a more local approach. So the video that you saw is from the local planner. And then recently we upstream the safe landing planner. Uh, 
uh, I mean, if you want to use your own, you, you could just interfere. Uh, I mean, you could customize any of the existing algorithms. Uh, it's just going through, at the moment, it's more going through the code and understanding what it does and changing the parameters to enable you to do whatever you want. Uh, they're used to do collision prevention, so it, the, that message is only used on the flight controller side if you are in position control mode, and if you go towards an obstacle, it will stop you from flying into it. No, it's only distance data. Yes, it's two-dimensional, yeah. So uh, we haven't any plans yet, but if it's something that is of interest in the community, sure, we can discuss about it. Mm. So just like, I would like just to get the feeling uh, how many of you have ever tried to use this interface or knew about it? Oh, okay, I'm surprised. <laughs> Uh, anything that you would like to do within the interf interface and it's actually not possible? Thank you. So, uh, yeah, I, I just can repeat the same thing as previously. So, uh, the interface doesn't allow to fly over obstacles. I mean, the obstacle distance, uh, I think it's... Uh, on the dimensional, otherwise, yeah. yeah the good. thing is that actually, like, also the flight controller won't let you go over obstacles, you know? It's just like it, it prevents you from, from flying into it, but you won't take a decision on going over it or below it or right or left. But flight controller can be changed with a single commit while the message for. Oh, okay, sure. Fair point. Curious, how, how are you going to handle the safe landing not above water? Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, we are going to keep developing the algorithm and uh, community contribution are more than welcomed. Um, about the water thing, I think it should be okay on, it shouldn't land on water already um, because you don't, uh, a depth camera won't be able to see any points on water. There's no features. Anything else? Perfect. Can you please raise your hand so I can locate you? Question is, do you have enough power to do, um, can you repeat that? For collision prevention. Uh, yeah, I mean, we are running on the flight controller, so you, there is limited things that you could do, but yeah, why not? I would just also stress the point that it might be really nice to have the feature of going over an obstacle, especially not in a survey where you want to stay flat, mm -hmm. but just if you want to make way, mm -hmm. you could just still limit it to the maximum altitude, but this okay. would be a really nice feature. Okay, sure. Is there any um, uh, conflicts about uh, obstacle avoidance and altering paths and geofence uh, algorithms? Uh, can you, sorry, can you repeat? Is there any conflict between the, the inserted paths uh -huh. and the geofence uh, mechanisms in uh, uh, If you run the interface, uh, geofence will prevail because it, it's an action taken by the commander, so it will respect whatever like uh, 
um, uh, whatever is the result of the fail safe if, if it use which to loiter or do RTL whatever like that would be executed Can you guys please raise your hand so I can locate you faster? Uh, so what if you do do an RTL? Is there any interface that we can do from the companion to override that behaviour and have a smart RTL or whatever? Uh, so right now, if you're running obstacle avoidance, like the, the RTL waypoints will get to the companion, and so we, you will do obs uh, RTL with obstacle avoidance. Okay, thank you. Uh, wait one second. Um, do you have another parameter or something to uh, define how far from the plan trajectory you can go off before stopping the movement or something? Because in some <clears throat> in some scenarios, you wouldn't want to go 100 meters off the track. Mm -hmm. uh, no, we don't have anything like that at the moment, but it's a, actually a very good point. That, for example, for survey, you don't want to go too far off from your track. Is there a parameter to tweak the acceptance radius from yes. the waypoints? Yeah, it's like NAV acceptance radius, something like that. Right. It's a firmware parameter. Okay, thank yeah. you. But I don't think that's yet executed by on the companion side. On my way. Uh, of which range sensor, sorry? I didn't get that. Okay. <laughs> the structure core. Ah, um, Julian, do you remember how much is the maximum range? Maximum about 18 meters, but not much detail at the distance, just presence or absence of something. So fixed wing for now? So fixed wing now, it's out of question, I guess. Yes. Can you wake up your laptop? Suppose on the companion computer we can uh, execute with functionality that finds a nice landing spot. How do we communicate with to flight controller? So, so right now you have this demo of a drone flying yeah. in spiral pattern. Finding okay. yes. safe landing zones. So let's suppose that we have a system that can find landing zones. How do we? Are we supposed to communicate with f landing yeah. spots that we verified that are safe to the flight computer? To yeah. Uh, so right now, on the video that you saw of the safe landing, we are overwriting the set points from the on the flight controller with the ones that come from the companion. So we are directly executing whatever we have decided on the companion computer. And you can do that like even with auto land. So when you click on QGC and swipe. Someone else? Please don't wait until the next question to raise your hand. If the safe landing detector, it, it um, sees something like a road and there would be cars going underneath it, would it constantly think, oh, it's safe, and oh, now it's not safe, and oh, it's safe, no, it's not safe? Or would it, does it detect something moving underneath it and deem it not safe? Uh, it continuously re-evaluates uh, the terrain beneath it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean... But that yeah. means that once the car is gone, it thinks yeah, it's safe. Yeah, but then end. once the car is gone, you would think that it's good, yeah. Yeah, might not be a good idea. But. Yeah, we are not doing like any detection of actually what's beneath the vehicle. It's just like it's flat enough. Could it be possible to actually use the algorithm in reverse to detect a moving object and land on a moving object? So instead of tracking safe points, tracking the desired moving point instead? Uh, 
I mean, it would require quite a bit of tweaking <laughs> and changing things. Like right now, it's not really set up for that. Uh, what would be the failure mode if it could never find a safe landing spot? Uh, <laughs> we haven't thought about that yet. <laughs> it, it will come. Keep an eye on pull requests. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. It's just it's a it's a new project. We just upstreamed it maybe two weeks ago, so it's in a really infant stage, and all these things will come along. Just uh, you have to give us time. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm good. Uh, good. Okay, thank you, Martina. Thank you very much.